Hello everyone, welcome to Houseplant Tips and Tricks. My name is Nick and today we're going to plant up some succulent and cacti gardens. This series is sponsored by RepotMe.com. Get all of your indoor gardening supplies delivered to your door from one place. RepotMe.com has practically anything you need for your orchids, succulents, and houseplants, including handmade potting mixes, planters, fertilizers, and much more. I always love getting creative with houseplants and making arrangements. It's like the equivalent of making a flower bouquet but with houseplants. And today we're gonna to be making little desert scenes, if you will, in these classic square planters from repotme.com. I really love the glaze on them as well as that they come with these. Bamboo saucers, very stylish. These and everything else that I'm going to be using from repotme.com is going to be linked in the description below. If you click through the links and make any purchases, I do get a commission and you can use code Nick to save 10% on any potting soils. So thank you very much in advance, but we're gonna be making little arrangements inside these. I have this one right here, which is the cream over copper color and then I have this blue and white one right here that kind of fades into turquoise it's very beautiful each side is different in terms of what you're going to see on the glaze so I'm really excited and I'm thinking we're going to do one that's more of a geometric succulent based one and another one that's a more like cacti true desert scene like I was saying so what are you going to need for today's project of course you're going to need a planter of any kind I really like these low ones that are wide because you're going to be able to fit a lot more in but they're not too tall because succulents prefer being in shallow planters they just don't require a lot of soil the roots are very fine they can rot very quickly if they're in too deep of a planter so this is perfect we are also going to need some plants of course I have an array of cacti and succulents I have some cacti these are some mammillaria cacti I also have some string of pearls we have a regular one and a variegated one as well as some more assorted succulents that feature some more like geometric patterns like these echeveria I believe this might be a sempervivum crassula Portulaca, Portulacaria, and then I have no idea what this one is, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. We're just going to have some fun with them. I also have some extra plants with me too. Uh, these are more for uh, filler. So I have this Kalanchoe tomentosa, which I'm not going to give you a close-up of because you're going to see all the cat hair that's hiding in it because my cat loved rubbing up against this. There was this one stalk that was like a foot tall. I cut it back because I was going to propagate it, but my cat found it before I propagated it and thought it was a toy, so it was shredded. <laughs> but there's a bunch of these little baby Kalanchoes in here, so I figured if there's any space, we can like pull a couple out. There's also this mother of thousands in here. So we got some extra little bits and pieces to fill in the gaps. And you're also going to need some soil. Of course, we're going to be using some cacti and succulent soil today, obviously. And you're also going to need some top dressing. Today we're gonna to be using sand and stones, but you can use whatever your heart desires. So let's start out by just getting a general idea of how we would like to lay out our gardens. I think I wanna do the blue one with the succulents because I think the color kind of goes better with like, you know, these purples and like bluish greens. Uh, and then we'll do the cacti in this more like true deserty one right here. So let's just grab like a plant. This one right here is tall. So this could be like more of a focal piece. So we wouldn't want like a bunch of tall plants coming out all of that. We want some dimension. So we want to have a nice uh, thriller. The rule of thumb when you're doing window boxes is that you want thrillers fillers and spillers. I talked about that in my plant arrangement video, another episode that we did here on houseplant tips and tricks, but uh, we don't necessarily need the spillers in this case. I mean, the string of pearls are technically a spiller, but I think this might be more of our filler. So we're gonna follow more of the thrillers and the fillers today. So uh, you're going to want one thriller minimum, but you don't want really more than two. You don't want more than like two things that are going to be just like taking all the attention away. Uh, I think this is going to be a real star of the show. For example, this might be a thriller as well. And when I'm talking about thrillers and fillers, thrillers are the ones that are going to be more upright and more of like the focal pieces. The fillers are going to be more of the ones that are just kind of filling in the gaps. Uh, same with the Callan, oops, if the Callan Kelly right here, if we use any of that, that's going to be a filler as well. Uh, but for example, this I don't know if they call this like a grandpa cactus or a granddaddy cactus. Love all the names, but uh, this is a focal piece for certain. So I think like when we do the cacti one, we'll probably end up using both of these cacti. This one being more of a focal piece. This one's still just, ha you know, catching attention, but a little bit less. And then from there, we can kind of work with it. Also, we want to be a little bit more unintentional. This would not look very good if we just, just gonna throw four in here. 
we just planted these up like these four like in these four quadrants no honey that's not going to look its best so we want to give it some dimension that's definitely important I'm getting pretty inspired right now by just this slight little layout that I have going on right here this kind of poking in like you know this half of the planter in the back if this was the back of the planter and this was the front and having this guy kind of just like slightly off from it because then that'll give us the opportunity to maybe include uh, this string of pearls as a little bit of filler maybe in this front corner up here and that might leave us some, or maybe even pushed over more towards the center I don't know but then I feel like we'll have this little room right here I feel like this little space right here we could turn into like a little zen garden moment uh, but we might want something a little bit more upright as well, kind of grabbing the attention. So maybe like this uh, portulaca, is that what it's called? Portulacaria? I don't know. You guys can let me know. <laughs> but uh, this might also really pop. Just a little extra character in this half of the planter with the pearls spilling forward. That's kind of a vibe. So we'll keep that in mind. Moving on with this one, I think the variegated string of pearls would look really, really cute in... The front of the planter as well. I love the idea of just kind of using this to fill out. Maybe we could put this in the center because we're already going to have this one spilling off the side here. I guess we are including a little bit of uh, spiller here and there. Uh, the decision really is do we want to use both of these taller plants? It wouldn't necessarily be you know bad. This jade plant really does catch a lot of attention. But I do really like the idea of this one kind of stuffed back here because it just really gives you like an idea but then from there I really want to be less deliberate because like I said this is really placed in this quadrant right here which is okay but if we just had like all four quadrants which is like one two three four that's when it would look just a little too deliberate a little too intentional and it won't look like we just scooped it out of the desert that's kind of what we're going for today I think I'm having a better idea of what I'm going to do with the cacti uh, one so let's start with that one I'm going to pick which side I think should be the front, which I think is obviously going to be the side with the, the drippiness going on. And I'm going to work on this backwards. I'll of course flip it so I can see, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing first and foremost. So I'll have some cacti and succulent classic mix by repotme.com here. I'm just going to use a spoon today. That's what I typically use. I have filled up my planter about halfway, I'd say. We don't want to fill it all the way because we don't want to be like digging in to put our plants in. We'd rather just place them in, but we still will dig a little bit just to keep our plants, give them some stability. Also, it's just easier than placing them in and then filling it with soil afterwards because then things are going to get moved around a bit. So I think this is just one of the best ways to do it. And I think a really great tip I have today is when you're working with cacti, use tongs. Metal tongs are best. These have silicone at the end, which obviously could get like punctured or get stuck on the plant or you could get needles stuck in them and they have to deal with it. So, like, do these come off? They do. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Perfect. I think they were supposed to come off. I don't know, but uh, that's fine. So uh, we are going to use these today to get our cacti out. It's just going to save our fingers. You could use gloves, but I just, I don't like to touch them at all. I've been bit once before. I could get bit again. <laughs> you should have seen me when I was at the farmer's market getting all of these succulents and cacti. Uh, this one in particular was in like the center of the train. I was trying to grab it and the person working there saw me and just came over and just reached in and <laughs> grabbed it. <laughs> she clearly is not afraid like the way I am. But uh, let's go ahead and get started by, oh gosh, I'm trying to think about what's the smartest thing to do. When I'm making a terrarium, the last thing I want to do is put in the focal piece because then it's going to be hard to reach in. But I don't think that's going to be the case for uh, cacti gardens. I'm much more of a terrarium crafter, if you can't tell. Uh, so this isn't going to get in our way. So I kind of want to place our focal piece uh, first so that we can just start to work around that instead of working from the little pieces and then out to the larger ones. Kind of a little bit more direct. Let's get our tongs. We're going to just gently massage the planter to loosen our plant out. Uh, I have a receptacle on the floor next to me here to catch the dirt. I'm not just pouring dirt out on the floor. Kind of just lay our plant down for the moment because that's going to be where it's where it is. And we have a cacti and we didn't get stabbed. How marvelous. Alrighty, so now I think I'm going to place in our other cacti. Let's just get that out of the way. 
you don't have to remove that much soil. I just don't want to be like placing these full plugs in here. I'm trying to be able to maneuver them a little bit better and that's definitely a lot easier when there is less soil on the plant. Beautiful. I'm just gonna use this mini planter to pick up some soil. Almost just touched this with my finger, which this one right here is less scary. All right, so I think we're going to add in this guy here, this whatever it is. <laughs> and finally, we can use our fingers for the rest of this project. Some of these you could probably even separate if you wanted to, like this is two separate plants right here in one pot. So I could separate them, but I wanna keep them together just because I like the way that they look. And things might be, you know, falling over, like this cacti is a little lopsided right now. This, I'm trying to keep it together. It's falling apart, but when we get to the end of the project, everything will be kept in place. We're still kind of in this uh, mapping it out moment, but I think I want this to be a little bit more upright. I like the idea of just kind of having then the string of pearls, like in this front area, just almost like spilling forward. I don't know, let's mess with it. I think we're gonna keep it like this pretty tucked into the corner up here. I like how it can spill forward. I'm so sorry about all that sound that's gonna be happening throughout this video, but just let it, give it the option to spill forward. Um, I'm gonna give both of these to friends. I have two friends who both recently moved into new homes. So I feel like this would be a really excellent little housewarming gift for them. I can put it in their windowsills. I know they need more plants. And you know that I do not need any more right now. Just using the back of the spoon and the handle for the more delicate areas to kind of just press down on the soil just so I don't have to get my fingers in there close to those cacti needles. I think I'm still gonna work with that like Zen garden moment in the back here, but I'm gonna grab our little Kalanchoe's right here. And these are, they'll just pull right out, literally. <laughs> and I can kind of just try to find spots where maybe I can just like Tuck in a little plant. I don't think that's a good spot, but maybe in the front here. I don't know. Mm. I also have, I neglected to say, this Kalanchoe fed skagkawai. <laughs> it's scary. Like, I could definitely use a prune and, like, one of these could. Wait, oh, well, I accidentally just broke it. So <laughs> Let me get my pruning shears. These are also from repotme.com. They're precision snips. You can see how these roots are on here. This thing will root up anywhere. You could probably just leave this on your counter or cutting of it and it would still root up and survive. So let's just break off a piece. You should normally let your thing, your, uh, your things, your cacti and succulents callus over if you are cutting them. Uh, and that is absolutely true. But like I was saying, Kalanchoe's are just kind of like unkillable. So I wouldn't really worry about that myself. Now this is giving it more of an under the sea vibe. I don't know if this necessarily fits in here. It'll definitely fit in with these guys. I don't know. I just didn't love all that blank space, Taylor Swift. And then um, now I kind of feel a little bit better about it. Doesn't really fit the vibe. But you know what? Today's about experimenting. I'm not an expert at this. I am just here to inspire. So this is not the last thing we're going to do. We have more steps before we are done with this. This is 0%, well, like 50% done, but it's not done yet. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, I'm just going to move this over here and let's get started on our succulent one. And then we will finish both of them up at the end. I think it'll be a much quicker process if we just attack the decorating part at the same time. So I do really like the idea of having these both kind of like shoved in the front. Maybe I could do it a little different. I don't know. I feel like they're just so dynamic that just having them poking out the front there, is it a little intentional? Yeah, but it's like just classic. You could even just fill up this whole entire thing with all these like geometric houseplants. And I think that would really be something. So let's start there. I feel like I started with the focal point last time and this time we're going to do it from the opposite angle because you can do whatever you want. That is, the joy of getting creative with projects like this. Once again, filling our planter up about halfway with our classic succulent and cacti mix from repotme.com. Let's start with this one because it looks a little bit more robust and perhaps a little bit more fragile. We have to be really careful with these. 
However, the, one of the best things about succulents in particular is if you do accidentally break a leaf off of these, many succulents will propagate from just one leaf. Example, I uh, accidentally broke a leaf off of this um, jade plant right here. And if I just take this leaf and just lay it on the soil, just like that, it'll root up into the soil. You don't want to put it in the soil or it will likely rot. So just lay it on top. That's what I did with uh, the Kalanchoe uh, tomentosa, the panda plant. And that's why there are so many plants in here because my cat would knock it off when she was rubbing up against it. And I would just place them on the bed of the soil and then they would root down the soil and a new plant would come up. It's pretty magical. So I could even just throw this in there and then we might be surprised in a couple of months when we have a nice new uh, jade plant just coming out of nowhere. So I like the idea of this kind of like coming off the edge of the planter. Do you see what I mean? I think it gives it like a better like 3D effect. So I think I'm gonna do the same with the other one. Like I said, many, many, many times, it's gonna look a little intentional, but we can work around that as we are continuing on with our garden here. We have the string of pearls. The variegated one. Do you remember this used to cost like $30? I got this for $3 at my local farmer's market, which if you are curious about that farmer's market, you can check out my TikTok at Philly Foliage. I think one of the first videos I did over on my TikTok is a little mini tour of that farmer's market, but I'm almost thinking maybe get them like in between. Then there'll be like no negative space. Hella spiller up in here. Honestly though, <laughs> that looks terrible. I think we need to maybe just like mess around with the idea of maybe not. <gasps> oh, okay. Now I'm thinking maybe the string of pearls could be shoved in the center here and then this will actually, we figured it out y'all. We figured it out. We'll just have this guy here kind of working its way over. Yeah, we're gonna go with that five because if this is staying a little bit more pushed up, which I'm struggling to do. Oh, just a little puff of air there. Uh, I'm gonna have this one set back a little bit more. So it's giving you just kind of like a boom, boom. That's fun. Just gonna make sure that the string of pearls is well supported. I support you, string of pearls. I'm here for you. If you need to talk, you know my number. There we go, it's well supported. Okay, so now we can put in the Semper Vivum. All right, I'm feeling much, much, much better about this. Like so much better about this. So I think from here, we're gonna take this jade plant. I like the idea of making this succulent one just like a little bit more busy than the cacti one, because once we decorate the cacti one, I think it's going to have its point come across a little bit better, <laughs> I will say. There's just so much color and geometry going on amongst these succulents in this blue planter that I kind of want to play with that a little bit more. Let's get this jade plant placed kind of in here. Yeah, that's neat. That's really neat. And that kind of gives us room to kind of place this guy back here and then we're gonna fill in the negative space with probably some of these Kalanchoe tomentosa and maybe a piece of the fed skegkoi because this definitely could still use a nice trim. This thing looks monstrous. And this just, oh, I'm sure I could grow something out of that wood stock, but this plant is just self-sufficient enough that I don't need to support it any more than I have been. Place this guy in the back here. Yeah, I really like this in comparison to you know, this one being, having the one focal piece. Oh, this, this is starting to stand out and I might remove <laughs> this Kalanchoe. I know this is off screen. Um, I might remove what's going on back there. We'll see what happens when we decorate. Could even just throw it in here, honestly. Well, let's see. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go a little bit more plain with the cacti one right here. And I think we're gonna continue playing with this because look how fun that is once I, None of you are questioning me. Why don't I need to defend myself? You all believe in me, don't you? Okay, so let's get another piece of this Kalanchoe uh, Fed Skegkoi, just because I want to be extra today. Remove some of the woodiness. 
don't need it all. And shove this back here again. Oh my God, love. So you can just kind of see in this back corner here, we have this Cal and Koei Fed Skeg Kawai. Now it's trimmed, it's still scary with these roots, but uh, it's a little bit more manageable than before. Hopefully my friends love it and I didn't just sacrifice my plant for no reason. I also have this, I don't know, let me just pull it out. Mother of Thousands piece, which I'm not doing anybody any favors by including this in here because it's like a freaking weed, but you know, just more the merrier today. Also, I can get it out of my possession and secretly <laughs> pawn it off on one of my friends. LOL, I'm just gonna pull out carefully some of these tomentosas. You know what, they're not really even looking that strong. There's a couple that I feel like I could like get away with. Like this one right here is kind of cute. Just like shove them in the back here. I know you can't even see, so let me just turn this around. Just a couple pieces, you know, nice texture. The addition of cat hair I'm sure will be appreciated by anybody. But we'll just take a little last bit of soil, fill up that little bit of space, use our fingers since there's nothing to bite us as I realize I'm getting my wrist awfully close to this cacti over there. So this one's a lot more, you know, it's got a lot more going on, that's for certain. Uh, but we're gonna decorate a little bit now. We're gonna put the icing on the cake here. Something that will come in really handy that I don't have today would be like a little brush. You could use like a, a makeup brush or a paint brush or something to kind of uh, just clean off any of the plants that aren't looking, uh, you know, got all some dirt on them, specifically like this one right here gets dirt caught in it and then the cacti. And now we are going to get some, oh my gosh, that's heavy. So <laughs> this is some sand, once again from repotme.com. And we're gonna use this as top dressing today. You can use sand in your soils. It's great for inside your cacti soils and your succulent soils. But I'm a sucker for some good top dressing. And you know what might make this even easier now that I'm thinking about it? A funnel. So let's just get this little funnel here. I feel like it'll just make a little less of a mess. And I'm going to just pour some sand in and kind of use it to kind of decorate. Well, it mainly worked. Still a hot tip, by all means. Just a little bit of sand. And if you have any like terrarium tools, those little shovels really come in handy. But honestly, this funnel is really, it's working a lot better than, a, than the spoon would. You can really just kind of paint the surface. But this sand is not only just for aesthetic purposes, but also just to help keep our plants in place because we maneuvered them around a lot. And like I was saying, like this guy right here was kind of, you know, falling apart. But now that I have the sand around it, I'm actually able to just keep it completely in place. It's not falling apart whatsoever. So it really does help. Give our pot a little spank to get it leveled. We can maneuver our string of pearls back in. I think I'm even just going to clean up some of these uh, roots that are coming off because they're just got a little bit of dirt on them and it's just taking away from our aesthetic experience. But that's so fun. And then last but not least, I'm gonna add some stones in. And I would kind of just like, I'll turn them so we can have a little Zen garden moment. Kind of just like press them into the soil. So they're kind of like half buried. I think it's going to give it a much more natural look, make it seem like once again, like you just dug this straight out of the desert. But what is sand without a couple of stones? You could even use some gemstones or crystals, minerals, whatever you have. It's also a really fun project to do with kids. Let them get really creative. Honestly, they could probably come up with something better than I just did here. They're probably a little bit more creative than I am. But this is looking really cute. It looks much better than it just did a couple minutes ago. You can see I have just like this little Zen garden moment going back here with the open space with the rocks. Could even just you know push my cacti forward a little bit more. Use the sand to keep it in place. As you can see, got it upright. Now it's looking fantastic. There we go. Let's finish this off with our other one here. Fill in the space. You don't want to see any dirt 
at all. No dirt. When you see these growing in their natural habitat, do you see any dirt? No. And you want this, oops, you want this to look natural. Oh, that's so fun. I'm so happy that we decided to, you know, separate these a little bit, have the string of pearls here, being a little bit of this, a little bit more of the star of the show than in this one. It's looking a little sparse in our cacti garden here, I won't lie, but it's getting the job done. Make sure to cover every last bit of dirt. You don't want to see it. Clean off the edges. Using my finger here, you could use a paper towel. You could use, once again, a makeup brush, paintbrush. They will literally be your best friend here. It's my mistake for not going out and picking one up before doing this project. Honestly, it would have been a very hot tip slash trick. Also to help get all of the sand off of our leaves here because that's going to be a bit of an issue. Of course, water will wash it right off, but as always, when you're working with cacti and succulents, when you plant them inside dirt, don't water them right away. Always, well, first of all, replant your succulents, I should have said this at the beginning of the video, but always repot your succulents and cacti only when the soil is dry, that is number one tip. And after you plant them in whatever you're planting them in, don't water them for a couple more days because at that point, the plant's going to be searching for water where beforehand it's probably going to be still acclimating and could possibly rot if you water it too much. So. I'm gonna let these sit for a couple of days and then I will go ahead and water them, probably rinse off the leaves as well just to make sure that I'm getting all the sand off. But I'm just gonna take a couple more stones here, shove them in the negative space. You can see right here behind uh, the jade plant is where, oh, I also have another leaf I broke off, but that's just going to hang out on the top of the soil and I might be surprised in a month or two when there is a new plant growing out. Or my friends will be because I don't think I'm gonna have these that long, but Get those stones buried in. Throw a couple stones in just like the tiniest little nooks and crannies, like right here. There's the tiniest little bit of um, sand showing. And over here, just the tiniest little bit where the string of pearls is, like place it underneath the Echeveria or the Sempervivum to give it some depth. More things to notice. You're not gonna regret that. But I think that's about all that we can do for this project today. But throughout this, process. I hope you learned something. I hope you got some inspiration. I hope that you watched me do this and you thought throughout this at one point. I think I would have done that differently because that's something you can do yourself and that's just even more creativity for you. The more, the better. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. Thank you once again to repotme.com for sponsoring today's video. Once again, all of the products that I use in today's video will be linked in the description below. And if you purchase anything through that link, I will get a commission. So thank you so much. But anyways, thank you again. If you don't already, you can follow me on Patreon for even more houseplant content. You can also follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Philly Foliage. Subscribe to my channel, of course, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great time.